In this video, I'm going to show you how to use the Bluetooth module from SparkFun. I did a search on this module and I didn't find too much information on YouTube. There's not too many YouTube videos on this module. So I thought I'd do a quick video, show you how to send and receive messages from a Bluetooth device. In this tutorial, I'm just going to use the Scamp 3 board, but you can use a uh, Flashforth, any Arduino flashed with Flashforth will work. If you're not familiar with the Bluetooth module, it's this uh, module right here. And I will leave a link below, but uh, this is the basic SparkFun Bluesmurth V2 module. So you can read all about it here. It's pretty simple. You got RX and TX and power and ground. Next, I'm using the Scamp 3 board from Udemonic. It's based off a PIC microcontroller and it uses Flash Forth. So if you're not familiar with Flash Forth, you can, it's free. You can burn it to any uh, Arduino 328P and there's a bunch of words. So if you want to follow along, you can uh, get a copy of Flash Forth, burn it onto an Arduino and you should be good to go. So I did a search for the module. And, you know, there's something from SparkFun about a year ago, but then, you know, you look around and there's not really anything. I mean, this is like from 15 years ago. So, uh, that's all I found. So that's why I'm doing this video. So now I'm going to show you how to connect to the Scamp 3 board. If you're not familiar with the Scamp 3 board, I'm using it mainly because it's, I think, the most plug-and-play fourth that you can get right now. You, if you don't want to deal with uh, burning X files, if you don't want to set up a VR studio, if you don't want to do all that stuff, and you just want to plug it in and use fourth, then I think the Scamp 3 is the best. I think the second best is probably McCrisp Stellaris. I did a short video on how to set that up. You pretty much just drag a UF2 file onto a Pi Pico and you're up and running. So those are the two, I think, easiest to use. To connect to the board, I've got them plugged in and as soon as I plugged them in, the Bluetooth module immediately just paired to the other Bluetooth module. So there was no setup there at all. And the, the schematic is pretty simple. It's just TX and RX and you got power and ground. So once you plug that in, everything will just try to connect to each other. The, the Bluetooth modules will try to connect and both of them will have green LEDs show up and that means they're both connected. So to connect to the scamp board, we'll just come up to new connection and we'll select COM6, click OK. And to figure out which one I'm talking to, I'll just type in one LEDs. We can see that this top one is the left scamp. We'll call it scamp A. And to turn off the LED, I can just type in zero LEDs. I can set this up. It's the same thing. Select COM7. And we can do the same. So that's the right scamp. We'll call it the scamp B. And there we go. So we're connected to both of these. And we've got, you know, our pro we're just basically kind of logged into the microcontroller. So from here, it's real simple to just develop your program line by line and test it out. That's kind of the fourth way to do things. If you run into any problems, come up to setup. Go to serial port and make sure that your speed is set to 9600 baud. And you can also set up a transmit delay. Some people will put in like 10 milliseconds. This is kind of if you're uploading a file to the scamp board. This is kind of recommended to do. But for now, I'll just hit cancel. And also you'll come up to setup and terminal. And some people We'll have to play around with these settings, but right now I have mine set to CR. 
So if you get any kind of weird errors whenever you hit the the enter key and it kind of floats off to the right, you want to play around with your those settings that are in terminal and dealing with the new line control characters. Next, I'm just going to clear the buffer or clear the screen. So we've got that cleared. So now we're ready for the next part. And if you want to see what words are available, just type in words, hit the enter key. We're going to be using some of these words up here. So we're going to uh, be dealing with the RX1 and TX1. And if you're not familiar with these words, you can go back to the Udemonic help page. And here's the help page. I just pulled it up. So we're going to be using TX1 to just send a character over UART1. So basically from one scamp to the other. What we'll do is we'll send out the hex character 55 over the TX line. So if you're not familiar with hex, you just type in a dollar sign followed by the, you know, the number. And you can see that 55 in hex is going to be 85 in decimal. So let me clear the screen again. So 55 TX1. And we just sent it out. So from this uh, Bluetooth module over to this one to receive it. We just type in RX1 question mark. And we can see that we have something in the buffer. So to print out the buffer, just type in RX1 and a period. And you can see that we've got our 85. So we just successfully, you know, sent this character from one module to the other using Bluetooth. So taking it a step further, let's say we want to transmit the word hello over from one module to the other using Bluetooth. We would do it, we would just type in, um, and type in the word key and it's going to ask you for inputs. So just type in the word H and we can see that H is 104 in decimal. We type in emit you know it'll print out an H so we can clear the screen and I can just type in um, the decimal for hello which will be uh, 104 TX1 101 TX1 and 108 TX1 so this is kind of the decimal representation of the word hello just type in enter, come down here and type in RX1. It says we got five characters, so you can just type in RX1, RX1, RX1. Just hit enter. And you can see that we've got the word hello. You know, there's our two L's, 108, 108. So I can just type in emit five times see what happens so we got our text but it's kind of backwards but um, so if you wanted to uh, send this out the the proper way you would have to put it in backwards but it just goes to show you know that you can you know try figure this out kind of line by line if you didn't know how to use this you would just slowly kind of develop your program and interactively. So that's kind of the fourth way to do this is you would see that, oh, okay, it prints it out backwards. So I need to, you know, figure this out, how to print it out backwards here so it can come out looking nice on this side. I've got a bit of code here. It's going to run in a loop. And we're going to blink at LED if we receive the decimal 85, which is, you know, 55 in hex, you know, is 85 decimal. So I'm just going to copy this and show you how this works. So paste. 
you can just right click in TerraTerm, paste it, and it'll go right in there. And if you get errors, you, like I said before, anytime you're doing stuff like this, you want to, uh, you want to set your delay to like 10 milliseconds. Uh, in this case, I didn't get any errors, so it's good to go. So over here, or actually on this scamp, I can type in smurf test, and it's going to run into uh, run a loop. So it's waiting for a character. Type in TX1. You should see a LED blink or come on. And you can see that our code successfully ran. So we got a LED that showed up over here. And that's just an example of what you can do. You can program a loop and have it just receive a message and do something. And this is also important that you always want to empty the buffer or clear out the RX buffer anytime you're working or sending and receiving information using these TX and RX lines. So you would just copy this in and I've already got it set up over here, but you know, you just type in empty buff RX one question mark, and you should always see a zero. So that means that we've emptied out the buffer and we're good to go. Also, you would do the same over here is you would empty the buffer. So that way you don't get any kind of things that are left over whenever you reset the device. And if you have any problems with the Bluetooth module itself, uh, there's a button on there that says pair. You just hold that down and it will start to pair. It will start the pairing process, but these modules are pretty good at just figuring out to connect to another module. So, it, I mean, it was just a pretty much plug and play setup. So if you like this video, like, subscribe, and let me know what you think.